uh, hello and uh, very good afternoon to you all. So thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, for this afternoon on this uh, interesting uh, session that uh, that is hosted by Latia Foundation uh, as part of the COP28 activities here in Dubai. So uh, today I will be sharing uh, our experience as Qatar Free Zone uh, with you, uh, focusing on the areas of uh, sustainability uh, as well as uh, ESG. Uh, so the presentation is uh, titled as Reach uh, the Future First. And uh, our motto is uh, sustainability at the core, uh, progress for all. So uh, the presentation will cover uh, issues that are related to uh, what are we doing as Qatar Free Zone, uh, what is our mission and uh, our uh, uh, economic role within the bigger picture of the state of Qatar, and in the importance and challenges that we are facing in this journey uh, into uh, uh, creating a sustainable hub for investment within the state of Qatar, uh, ESG in the state, and then benefits of ESG and specific ESG implementation and goals, uh, as well as the future and upcoming projects that we are uh, considering as Qatar Free Zone. So, uh, in a nutshell, Qatar Free Zone uh, has been established in 2018 uh, and with a kind of a soft opening in 2021. Uh, the, the, the primary objective of establishing Qatar Free Zone uh, is to attract uh, FDI uh, into the state of Qatar. Uh, and, and, and by saying attracting, uh, we are focusing on attracting responsible business. We are not focusing on attracting any uh, type of business, but more focus into uh, those uh, sustainable uh, ones. Uh, as you can see here, I'm, I'm kind of just showing you the locations for the uh, free, the two free zones that we have within within the state of Qatar, and they have been uh, allocated in areas with a very close proximity to uh, to the access to the main ports uh, within the state. Uh, we have uh, Ras Bufantas, uh, which is very close to the Hamad International Airport. Uh, and we have the second area, which is Omal Hall. And Omal Hall is very uh, close to uh, the marine port that we have in the state of Qatar, which is uh, Hamad Port. The location itself, it's helping us a lot uh, from a sustainability perspective, because when we calculated the uh, the carbon footprint that we are cutting by having uh, direct access to areas of of, of like Omal Hall, uh, we we currently we are saving around eighteen tons, eighteen thousand tons uh, of CO two uh, per annum uh, just by having that kind of access. So so this is the big kind of benefit that we are having already uh, by the location of the uh, of the two uh, free zones. So where are the areas that we are focusing on if we are talking about uh, the, 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 the sectors that we are targeting and focusing on? We have seven sectors that we currently target. We have the emerging technologies. Uh, we would like to attract emerging technologies because we know that whenever we talk about sustainability, then emerging technologies is one of the areas that we should focus on. Uh, the second area is logistics. We, we already have logistic companies that are operational within the free zone and those logistic companies they are in line with our strategies for sustainability and they are adopting innovative technologies to ensure that uh, they are adopting sustainable uh, logistic uh, practices. Uh, we have the industrial and consumer uh, sector and we have the, uh, uh, the maritime sector, we have the aerospace and defense and we have food and agri-tech. And we have the last one, which is the biomedical uh, sciences. So this is an area as well that we are focusing on and we are trying to develop. So if we are to talk about the emerging technologies, uh, then I can just like uh, uh, mention a couple of examples that we have within the free zone. So we have established two data centers uh, within the free zone. And these two data centers, one of the objectives that we were considering is to support uh, the journey of sustainability, sustainability as well. So the data centers are supporting the uh, IT infrastructure that we have for those investors. 
and they are supporting the adoption of AI and IoT kind of technologies. So, so in a way or another, they are supporting uh, that kind of journey. We have uh, uh, Yutong, and this is like the company that is uh, helping in the transition into the electrification scheme. So uh, we are putting a kind of a great focus on the electrification. And this same company, uh, they are the ones who supplied the local market with the electric buses for the World Cup uh, last year. So, so we are bringing them to, to establish their, their facility, their manufacturing facilities uh, within the free zone so that uh, they can supply not only the state of Qatar, but the region as well as the uh, African countries as well. So these are just like kind of a uh, couple of examples that we would like to highlight uh, on the emerging technologies. Uh, logistics and, and, and trading. This is another area that we are uh, focusing on. And if I just give like examples of uh, logistic companies like DHL, they do have a very stringent kind of uh, plans to adopt cleaner kind of, of, of uh, technologies into their logistics to transfer into the green logistics. As examples, now DHL, they are moving all their fleets into the electric uh, EVs, uh, electric vehicles, and they have already started implementing that kind of strategy uh, now. So, so this is just an example on the, um, on the, on the logistics. So the role that Qatar Free Zone is playing uh, in the kind of bigger context of the uh, state of Qatar's economy, uh, we are creating an economic impact. Uh, we are uh, positively contributing to the national economy of the state. And uh, we are a hub that creates jobs uh, for, the, uh, for the state. So we are not only helping the, the national economy directly, but we are helping it through the creation of, 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 of jobs. Uh, integration into the uh, national kind of strategies and goals. We are part of the uh, National Vision 2030, and we are part of the National Environmental and Climate Change Strategies of the state. So we are as well uh, helping uh, the implementation on these uh, strategies of the state. We are helping the state by developing uh, a state-of-the-art infrastructure. And as example, as I mentioned in my uh, discussion that uh, we, uh, we have the data centers that we already uh, have there that are supporting the IT infrastructure that we have within the free zones. And uh, we are creating a business friendly kind of environment as well. So, uh, so this is, this is basically uh, how we are uh kind of contributing into the bigger picture of the of the state's uh economy on the on the ESG side of it uh why are we considering the ESG why do we believe that ESG is something very important for us uh in the in the free zone first because we are selling ourselves as 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 we are very well committed towards uh environment so we would like to achieve our environmental stewardships by uh, by adopting uh, the ESG scheme, ESG will serve us in Qatar Free Zone to be like a buy-in strategy, so that we know uh, lots of investors uh, now. If you don't have such schemes in place, they will not come to you. They will just say, "Sorry, we are not interested in this," because they want to know that where are they deploying their investments. So this is another area that uh, that will help a lot by adopting these uh, ESG schemes. Uh, uh, ESG will uh, uh, complete that kind of picture for us from a social perspective, because looking at the social part of it, the S part of the ESG, then we have commitments to our community, towards our employees and so forth. So the ESG will support that kind of part, uh, fulfilling the, the, the requirements, and then uh, it will fulfill the part of the governance, the G side of it. So having, we cannot achieve what we would like to achieve from ESG or sustainability perspective without a stringent governance system to be adopted within the, within the free zone. So that's why we are kind of, uh, focusing on, on, on ESG as the selling point for us. Uh, and, and regardless of, of what we are 
doing in, in this kind of areas, uh, we do have challenges. So these kind of challenges, uh, just, just to give like an example of the challenges uh, that we are facing is like, for example, the resource management, because finding that kind of resources that are needed, you know, for the implementation of these kind of schemes is a little bit kind of challenging as well. In the market, uh, uh, the carbon footprint uh, reduction is another area that uh, we feel that it might be uh, challenging nowadays, you know, if if we come into that local kind of, 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 of context. Engaging with communities, whenever we talk about the S part of it, then the community plays a, a crucial role into that. So having that kind of engagement with uh, the cultural context that uh, you might be working with, it might be challenging uh, sometimes. And then the regulatory compliance, local and international standards, because at the end of the day, all those investors that we are attracting uh, are like not all of them, but some of them are international investors that are coming from the international uh, market or international arena. And then for us to attract them, then we need to consider uh, those kind of requirements that we that they have uh, at the international level. And then we have the transparency and, and accountability. At the end of the day, ESG, whenever we implement an ESG framework, we have to be transparent. We have to disclose uh, our, our ESG reports. And that ESG reports, we need to ensure that it's transparent enough, you know, to give that trust and that confidence to, uh, to your stakeholders. Uh, integrating ESG into business strategy, this is another uh, challenge that we are uh, looking at. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's an area that we need to ensure that we, 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 we work on it. And then here, uh, I'll be talking on the scheme that we do have in the state of Qatar. How are we integrating ESG into the current structure that we have? And how are we integrating it into the commitment of the state of Qatar? So whenever we talk about climate change, then we know that this is the state of Qatar is part of the UNFCCC and they are part of the uh, uh, Paris Agreement. And as, as per the Paris Agreement, they are the national, the NDCs, the national determined contribution that the state of Qatar have, have committed to. And, and to comply with these, the state of Qatar, they have their own uh, uh, vision uh, 2030, Qatar National Vision 2030, and then they come up recently with uh, Qatar uh, strategies for uh, environment and climate change, and all of those, they are in line with the commitments of the state of Qatar. And then we come as Qatar Free Zone as an implementer. You know, at the policy level, we have already addressed that uh, that policy level internationally and nationally. And then at our level, we are talking about the implementation level as part of those entities that are supporting the state to comply to their uh, international uh, commitments in this area. So what's uh, the role of ESG for us in, in, in Qatar Freedom? So the ESG will enable us to align with the Qatar National Vision. Because if you look at the Qatar National Vision and you look at the ESG framework that we, are, that we are adopting, then we are in a way or another aligning ourselves into that uh, National Vision Strategy uh, 2030. And then uh, it will enable us to diversify uh, the, the economy or the, uh, the sectors that we are working on. Uh, so, so we are trying to move a little bit or work out our transition from fossil fuel into cleaner kind of energies like renewables. And, and, and if uh, you might all know that if at, at the state level in our national grid, we already have a contribution from the, from the renewable, uh, renewable energy around 10% now that are uh, coming into the national grid is, it's coming from Al Kharsa, uh, plant which is a renewable uh, plant that has been constructed recently. And the rest of it, it's coming from natural gas. And foot, uh, carbon footprint wise, we know that uh, the, the natural gas is one of the lowest uh, in carbon factor. So, so all in all, and we have established uh, facilities that are greener, that, that are fitted with solar roofs that even can, can contribute to another kind of 30% uh, renewable into that. So all in all, if you consider 
what we are doing, then you understand well that we are in that kind of, of transitioning, transition track towards uh, renewable and towards compliance into uh, the, the, the requirements of the, of the state uh, to be able to, uh, to help in that kind of uh, commitment. So uh, this is an area that we are really keen to uh, move forward with and then enhancing our global competitiveness because at the end of the day, as I said, bringing international investors into the state needs a lot of efforts from our side. And this is what we are trying to do. And we are trying to use this ESG scheme as a buy-in because not lots of reasons in the world have adopted like a stringent ESG framework. So for us to be like uh, uh, playing a role, a positive role into, into, into adopting the ESG uh, frameworks now as a free zone, this will give us that kind of um, uh, co market competitiveness to, to bring more kind of players into, into the state of Qatar. So what are the strategic benefits that we are looking at out of this? So attracting sustainable investment. So as I said before, uh, having these kind of standards and requirements will enable Qatar Free Zone to attract the, 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 the responsible investors, investors who uh, have signed into uh, things like the BRI, the uh, uh, principles of responsible uh, investments, uh, investors who are keen to help or to participate in the journey of transition into cleaner technologies, into uh, establishing their innovative kind of uh, uh, structures, you know, to help the, the not only the state of Qatar, but to help the whole region in this kind of transition uh, journey. Uh, as well, it will help us in, 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 in establishing or putting the uh, foundations for the uh, innovation. Because as I said, whatever we talk about uh, sustainability, whenever we talk about the journey, we cannot achieve what we would like to achieve without considering uh, innovative technologies as part of that kind of journey. So we believe that ESG will help us to uh, adopt that kind of innovative technologies and it will help, this will help us like to be more kind of resilient against environmental and social and economic uh, challenges that the world is facing nowadays. And then it will establish that kind of legacy that we are we are we are we are looking at because as i said qatar free zone we are selling ourselves as a pioneer into this area so uh, having that kind of uh, uh, system in place it will definitely help into that kind of of of, of uh, uh, legacy establishing that kind of legacy for for qatar free zone so where are the areas that we are focusing on now when whenever we look at the scheme that we are talking uh, about and that supports the journey uh, in line with the commitments of the state of Qatar towards uh, Paris Agreement or uh, climate change. And so we are focusing on the E side, mainly on the uh, carbon and climate uh, change. We are focusing on the uh, natural resources and we are focusing on establishing a circular economy uh, model. And, uh, in, and into that, we have already established a standard for circular economy. So we want to make sure that we have a proper set setup in place. Whoever is coming to Qatar Free Zone, now we have around 55 standards that have already been established that supports this journey of sustainability for us. So all those investors, they have to be in line with that kind of, uh, of journey for, for investment. And then managing uh, risk. On the social part, we are talking about the community engagement, community participation, attracting talent, from the uh, from the local market, the human rights, the HR, uh, and and health and safety kind of areas, and then the uh, diversity and inclusion uh, uh, into uh, the, the 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 human uh, resources that we are looking at. So, the last part that we are focusing on is the governance part, and on the governance we are looking at our board because this is very important that. Currently, there is a discussion going on to establish uh, an ESG committee at the board level. So we want to make sure that we have that kind of representation at that high level so that it will show the commitment and then they will lead into the implementation of uh, what we have. 
and then issues that are to do with the supply chain or strategies into supply chain. This is another area that we are focusing on because at the end of the day, without like one of the areas that we are focusing on is the upstream and downstream uh, carbon footprint or DHG emissions. So without considering a proper uh, code of, of, of conduct into the supply chain, we might not be able to uh, to address that kind of, 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 of issue. So what are the specific implementation and goals that we are targeting when it comes to ESG? We have the energy and fuel efficiency. So we are in a way or another moving towards uh, implementing an energy management system that will improve the efficiency uh, of the current energy that we are using uh, in, 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 in into uh, uh, all of the facilities that we have within Qatar Free Zone. And I believe that rolling out an energy efficiency uh, program will help a lot, a lot in cutting and, and reducing the waste that we have from, from an energy perspective. And then uh, establishing and improving the, the green infrastructure that we already have. As I said before, that we already investing a lot into the green infrastructure that we have as Qatar Free Zone, but we want to invest more into these areas to ensure that we have uh, our uh, infrastructure all as labeled as green. Uh, the, uh, on the greenhouse gas uh, reduction side of it, uh, we are uh, increasing our green cover, like landscaping, even the landscape that we are using, we are 100% using a recycled uh, effluent. We have two uh, sewage treatment plants within the free zone, and we are treating that sewage so that the water, the treated sewage effluent, can be channeled back to be used as uh, as, as as for irrigation of the of the landscaping that we are actually uh, doing now. All the irrigation for the landscaping is coming from a treated sewage effluent, and then uh, we would like to uh, our sustainability policies, our uh, standards has already been uh, established, as I said before, and then we want to move more into the adoption of renewables like solar. As I said, the current plan is that all our buildings, although they are rated as green buildings and uh, they are GSAS certified and GSAS, if any one of you doesn't know GSAS, GSAS is a hybrid between the BREEAM and, and the LEED standards. And it's like the, the standards that are being used uh, within this part of the world, you know, when it comes to sustainability and sustainable buildings and, 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 and so forth. So our buildings are rated as green buildings as per the GSAS requirements. And we are working on uh, improving the, the ratings of, the, uh, of those uh, buildings as well to be more and more sustainable, focusing on areas of like electrification and, and using of renewables and more kind of control into uh, the uh, efficiency of these. Because as I said before, we have established the data center so that the data centers will enable the use of cloud services, will enable the use of IoT. And we all know that nowadays, IoT, they play a critical role. Whenever you are talking about efficiency of energy into the buildings and, and this kind of things, then uh, you need uh, this kind of infrastructure of IoT so that it will help uh, into uh, these kind of, 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 of areas. So not only that, but like capturing the data, because whenever we talk about sustainability, ESGs and these kind of things, data is one of the critical things you know, to get that data and then to ensure that your the data that you are using is reliable. Because at the end of the day, we we need this data not only to disclose and to be transparent, but we need this, we need the data for the decision making. And that's why this is one of the reasons that we have established dashboard that will analyze the data and then it will uh, present or represent this data in a way that the management, because if you are bringing your data and then you are taking it in Excel sheets and presenting it to your C-suites, they will not understand it. And then at the end of the day, you might not be able to get that decision that you are looking at from that from the top. So that's why we have developed these uh, BI dashboards so that it will help the management to understand and to follow up as well, because they have direct access to these dashboards so that they understand and then they can follow up 
with us on the KBIs on our performance and, and, and this kind of things. Not only that, we went more deeper into uh, considering establishing of simulators. Why? Because nowadays, if you look into the scenarios for decision making for the top guys, they need this kind of tools because it will enable them to take that kind of decision that they would like to take. If we go to the management to tell them that, hey, you know what? We have this hundred thousands or whatsoever of GHG emissions and we would like to cut 20% or 30% by this year out of that. Immediately they will start thinking about, okay, how about cost? How much that will cost us? You know, so to convince the management then we have different ways we can play with, like we can come up with different scenarios. So we established this simulator to show them that, you know what, okay, play with it. What do you want? How much do you want to reduce in your uh, emissions, for example, in the next one or two years? How much are you willing to pay for that kind of reduction? You know, how much are you willing to invest in that? So playing with these kind of, of dashboards, will you will show them that, hey, okay, you know what? We can take like, for example, 100,000 to be invested in renewables and we can take another 50,000 to be invested in this and we can, we can buy credits for like another may, maybe 100,000 or 200,000 and so. So you can show them the whole kind of picture and these kind of simulators will show them the optimal, you know, because at the end of the day, you are paying money, you know, so you will tell them that, hey, okay, you are getting the maximum value of that expenditures or whatsoever, you know. So this is very important for the management because all the time you go back to them and you tell them about anything, carbon cutting or whatsoever, they will ask you that, hey, okay, how much that will cost and how much revenue it will generate for us. So so this will enable that kind of, of journey. So what does the future, what are we looking at when we talk about future? We want to move more into the renewables because we know that we cannot depend on fossil fuel for quite long time. And we know that they are, the whole world now, they are just chasing this kind of fossil fuel, you know, phase out, phase down, all these kind of things. So how do we play that? We need to move, we need to do that kind of transition. And the transition, whenever we talk about renewables, then we need to consider the options. You know that like, like how, how much sun we have here in this part of the world. So let us make use of that solar energy that, that's there, you know, uh, and move into, into this uh, uh, solar energy or adoption of renewables. Green infrastructure, as I said before, we have already invested a lot into the green infrastructure and into our green buildings. So we need, and we are considering as well, because if we you look at the free zones that we are operating now, they are not all kind of fully 100% developed. So these parts that are not developed, like for example, now we are working on uh, establishing another shared like data center. And, and one of the options that we are considering seriously now is to have that data center dependent 100% on solar. So these are the kind of projects that will, will help us, you know, in this journey of greening our investment within the, within the free zone. Technology. The role of technology, we know that technology now they are playing a very big role, you know, into this sustainability scheme. So we need to invest into, into technologies. We need to allow, we are selling ourselves as enablers for sustainability. So how are we enabling that? By hosting more of these kind of innovative technology projects, investments, and so forth. We are encouraging SMEs, we are encouraging uh, startups to come to establish themselves into these areas of, of innovative uh, technologies as well. And we are partnering. Part of what we do is academia because without having that kind of relationship with academia on the research and development, we cannot achieve what we would like to achieve. So this is an important area for us. So we are allocating lots. We, are, we have already started signing MOUs with the universities. Come, bring your students, bring your whoever you have to come to help us into this journey of uh, sustainability and how we can achieve that. Community engagement. Whatever we are doing, we cannot achieve what we want to achieve without the people, without the community, without involving. Community is part of your stakeholders. So you need to make sure that they are part of your journey. 
So this is another uh, area that we are targeting. Not only that, we have we are working on establishing a an awareness portal for sustainability for the communities that we are we are we are working with. So now we are sending like messages to those people to raise their awareness into these areas to improve the way that they are engaging with us, you know, to achieve that. Because the journey is not only our journey, it's their journey as well. You know, whatever things that we do, however positive or negative, it's impacting them. So why don't we bring them on board? And then all of us, we work towards that kind of, of, of positive uh, journey that we are looking at. And then the workforce development. So our employees, our workforce, this is so important for us. So we need to make sure that we are uh, engaging with them. We are developing their capabilities because we know that lots, one of the big challenges that we are facing now, people, whenever you talk about AI and this kind of technological things, they will think that, hey, okay, no, 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 you know, we will be out of the market tomorrow because of this kind of new thing that they are bringing. No, we don't want you, we don't want you to be out of the market. So how to bridge that kind of gap? We have to upgrade their capabilities uh, into these uh, areas and then enhancing our governance framework. We do have a government governance framework that we need to uh, work on uh, more so that we can enhance it. So with that, I would like to thank you for your time with us. And if there is any question or anything that I am willing to uh, to take, thank you very much.